good afternoon. Our 43rd lesson of the Bible. And today we're going to get into the actual King James Bible. And when we're done with the King James Bible, we are done with this study. So it's going to be quite a few more weeks. I was thinking about one more thing to look up and do, but I'm, I'm not going to say anything in case I forget or don't do it. But here we are. <clears throat> We're at the 3rd century. From 201 AD to 300 AD. And if you hear background noise, I apologize. There are false gospels. Gospel is good news. The gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. There are false gospels today. There are foreign doctrines. Doctrines unknown to God and the Holy Spirit found in the Bible. They're called traditions. They're called rites. They're called, we've always done it this way. This is what grandma and grandpa's church used to do. This is what we do. And they are present in the religious and cult doctrines in the Bible or canon that's not intended by God. There are books <clears throat> written by people placed in the Bible, an offsuit of the Bible, God never attended it, and the Holy Spirit never authorized it. You know, the Mormons have the you know the, the other testament of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit didn't want the, the other testament of Jesus Christ. God did not want the watchtower. God did not want to watch the missile or the books of the Apocrypha, which we've already studied. God gave us sixty-six books. In the, underline and, and bold the word the, King James 1611 authorized Bible and no other. There's book, you know, the book of Jabez and the, the, the book of Enoch. No, they're garbage. Okay, they're garbage. It might be good reading to put you to sleep or what, I don't know. I don't even read them. So there are false gospels, false books, foreign epistles. Again, like I said, there's all kinds of epistles of uh, Barnabas and all and everything like that. They are part of the canon, but not part of God's canon. You got the Catholic and Protestant. Now, Baptists are not, separatists are not Protestants. I'm sorry to... Uh, Pastor Ruckman, but we're not. Okay, we don't follow the rights of the Catholic or Protestant Church. The Protestant Church is a semi cleaned up Catholic Church. They pretty much had basically the same sacraments and rules. And the priest came over to laity. Now that's rebuked and condemned in Revelations 2 and 3 called Nicolaitism. That's where, you know, I'm the priest, you the low man, I'm in charge of you. Who do you say you got to say? I have the right to go up to my pastor, and I have. Something wrong with what you said. You can't say that in the Catholic Church because they say it in Latin, you don't know what they're saying. And the Catholic and Protestants are from Egypt, the Western Church. We are from Antioch, the Eastern Church. They're born-again Christians. They came from a higher class of ministers and lower class of people of the church. What we have in, in the Baptist Church today is reality. I'm, I'm sorry for Facebook, it's dark. Daylight. Um, we have what we call cliques. It's not 
a Nicolaitanism. It, you know, this family preferred more. And I've been in churches like that. I have been offshoot by the church because I wasn't their favorite. So. And that's rebuked and condemned in Revelation 2 and 3. Not exactly Nicolaitanism, but still. And they'll, you know what they'll be the first ones to say to you? Well, you know, Jesus had Peter, James, and John. Yeah. Okay. You get convinced of your sins and you excuse your sins. And There's a political building and mainframe of the Roman Empire and the Roman government became the standard and church government. Now, if you were to look at the architect of Washington, D.C., the capital of America, if you resurrected a Roman during this time over here in America and set him down nowhere else but Washington, D.C., he'd think he'd be in Rome. The buildings look like Rome. The architect looks like Rome. There are sculptures and statues like Rome. And we got a Roman church over on the other side of Washington, D.C. called Maryland. It's not Maryland. How do you get Maryland? Maryland. Right across the seat of our government. But we have... And the Bible does not stress or teach or emphasize. It tells us Christians we are to obey the king, though we have a president. It says that the Christian is to be a proper citizen. He's to be a legal citizen. When I mean legal, he's to obey the laws. A Christian has no business to be a thief, a robber in jail. The democratic system is Roman. The Republican system is Roman. The voting system is Roman. You, you don't find voting in the Bible. And the business meeting, that's Roman. And the voting in the business you find incorporated into the church. We actually, in the church... Everybody approve of this family or this person to be invited into the church. Raise your hand and say hallelujah. Amen. Wait a minute. I thought a person was put into the church by their faith and belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ alone. We got to add an extra doctrine that, oh, we got to say amen, raise our hand, hallelujah, up and down. I had a man rebuke me because I sent out Chick Track uh, YouTube. To all my Facebook, you know, this is a bunch of, and he does a bunch of this. Listen, the church has got a lot more, more damage than a little bit of misinterpreting the words of Jack Chick and his invitation. You got Christians today, hey, it's nothing about the Republican system. Ah! And I heard one Christian say, well, you know, I'm going to kill, the, I'm going to kill uh, these Democrats. They're both the same. They're both all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay. The church embraced the world and the world embraces the church. All are welcome. But you bring the Bible, you street preach where the world is, like a farmer's market in Daytona Beach. You're not welcome. I was told when we, every Saturday when we were there at the farmer's market, we were there for six years. I was told by the police officer, when we're there, 911 dispatch gets at least one phone call every Saturday we're there. They don't want us there. We finally closed that ministry because of health and all that, but they finally said, listen, we just leave. So I did. Brushed off the, the sand off my shoes and walked away. So the church says to the world, come in. The world says, keep Jesus out. 
and Christians are all too happy for that. The leadership in worship began to take an Old Testament activity away from the New Testament activity. For the New Testament church communion of all the believers round about the table of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Old Testament the sacrament was upon a table administrated by the priest of the Mass. You see, The Catholics and the Protestants have a Lord's Supper, so does the Baptist. And I've been in church because the Lord's Supper, we are given a stern warning to judge ourselves before we partake unworthily. And for some, it's just a ritual happening. We just do it. And there are many Catholics, and there are many Protestants, and there are many Baptists. Oh, okay, I'll, take, I'll partake of the Lord's Supper. And they don't even know what they're doing. They don't even know what the Bible says. And for some churches, denominations, that mass, that supper, that blood, that, that cookie, is a means of salvation or part of a salvation. The church discipline and the pure sign of evidence of repentance and godly sorrow. Churches today, well, hey, you're a sodomite, it's an abomination, in the but come on into our church. There are people who listen, there are Christians that listen to Joyce Myers. When the Bible says a woman is not to assert the authority over man. And what's worse, there are women in the pulpits. What's even worse is you got lesbian women in pulpits of the churches. And that's a direct violation of the word of God. Indulgences, which Martin Luther was against, that's one of the main things he was against the Catholic Church. As a full or partial remission of temporal punishment for sins after the sinner confesses and receives absolution. You know why one of the things you have a Saturday night mass, the Catholic Church, so you can sleep in Sunday. And Sunday Mass with Saturday night masses, you can live like the devil on Friday and Saturday, and before going into the new week. You go see your priest, you tell your priest what you've done, he gives you pee pie po foam and Mary's big toe, whatever, all that kind of nonsense and some beads. And then you're believed to be cleansed. Listen, the mafia would go to their, their, their priest and all that, and we're going to kill and we killed somebody. Okay, give us some money and God will be happy. Mortal sins that endanger your soul and venial sins, which are less serious breaches of God's law. There are different degrees of sin or sinners. When the Bible says all have sinned. Now you can't say, oh, the, the, the abortion is a much serious murder than a child stealing a cookie. You can't say that the child molester is much worse than I lied to my boss so I don't have to go to work today. No, you're all sinners. We are all sinners. All sin is sin. All lies are lies. There's no degree to sin. And there's only one damnable sin that will cast you off into hell and the lake of fire for all eternity. And that's rejecting the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. A candidate of politics that approves abortion is worse than a candidate that, you know, they're, they're full of pride. There are Christians that will stand in front of abortion clinic, hold up signs, pictures of unborn baby, ah, and they're full of pride. Or they may go home and sip on beer or smoke a cigarette. Or today, now legalized, smoke dope. 
But you know, I heard, I heard, I held a sign for abortion. And what other sins do you do? Maybe you got a big mouth. That's a sin. Maybe you eat too much. That's a sin. Maybe the pornography. Jesus said, "Who who started looking upon a woman the lust after her in his heart has committed adultery with her." Maybe one of them women going to the abortion clinic, you your eyes, oh, that's a beautiful. Uh, yeah, there's a sin right there. Churches today, Baptists, the sin of adultery would never be forgiven by a Baptist congregation of men. I know a pre I know a preacher right now. Oh, the sin of divorce. Oh, the sin of adultery. You know, if you don't work, meanwhile you got pride. And you're messed up on marriage. I don't mean your marriage. I mean how you feel about marriage. Make it in a big joke. The celebration of the church worship became celibacy. Set days for fasting. And you know Lent. 40 days of Lent. I've been in Baptist churches. Hey, we're going to fast this week. We're going to have a three day fast. And on Friday the third day. We're going to go out and have a fellowship. Well, that's not three days of fasting. Three days of fasting, it, it, you got to wait till Saturday. And Jesus said, let no man see at your fast, anoint your faith, and go out. Hey, it don't even look like you're fasting. He got a bunch of Baptists together, oh, we're fasting, look how great we are. By the way, that church is a flop today. I got the sign of the cross. I see even Christians do it. The Bible says that he that hangeth from a tree is a cursed. How are you trying to make a blessing out of a cursing? You don't know your Bible. Genuflection. That's when you make the sign of the cross. Genuflection. By the way, this genuflection, when you make the sign of the cross, precedes, precedes the founding of the Roman Catholic Church. No, people are doing that before the Catholics came along. Like, you can find the Catholic Church in the Book of Judges, preceding the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church did not corrupt Christianity. Now, I'm going to say that again. Some people think, the Roman Catholic Church did not corrupt Christianity. The Christianity grew up out of corruptness. That big, filthy, melting pot that Christianity was in, the Catholic Church only just added its poison. So you can't blame the Catholic Church. You know, sorry, somebody said, you know, like perverted Bible. Paul writes about people corrupt in the Bible. Paul spoke about people said the, re the resurrection's already happened. The Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church has came in and added. And the Roman Catholic Church, the, the, the paganism and the tradition, they're Babylonian, they're Egyptian, they're Assyrian. They're Canaanitish. There are things that Israel worship in the wilderness and in their land that's in, that's in the Catholic Church, in the Baptist Church. Today, the church ordinances changed. The Lord's Supper became a sacrament. Nowhere in the Bible do you find anything like in the sacrament. Nowhere. So, what we have is church ordinances. The Lord's Supper became a sacrament. That's nowhere in the Bible. A sacrament is a means of salvation. And I forget the, the Protestants and Catholics have seven of them, is it? Baptism became a rite of the church. Infant baptism and all that. Baptism is to be after a man is saved. That 
thief on the cross did not receive the Lord's Supper and did not was, was not baptized. And Jesus said, Today thou shalt see me in paradise. Donatism is a heresy leading to the scheme of the Church of Carnus. From the 4th to the 6th centuries AD, they urge Christian clergy must be faultless for their ministry to be effective and their prayer sacraments to be valid. In other words, you had to have a priest that was perfect. You know, over there in, uh, I believe it's 2 Timothy, and I'm not sure, 1 Timothy, Paul gives a li list for a bishop. Right, you ain't going to find anybody who's going to fulfill that list 100%. It's impossible. But see, if the clergy are sinless, the clergy is perfect, then we're above the, the, you know, those sinners down there. The Novain, Novain, Novations, 250 A.D., if a man was not baptized or did not meet our standard, he needed to be rebaptized to our standards, or you cannot have no communion with our church, and that's Baptist writers. It has to be those this way. I remember there was a baptism, and when the person was baptized, all their hair didn't get wet. Now, we believe in the mercy. Somebody raised such a ruckus that all oh, their hair didn't go under. We got her baptized. No, that's a typical, difficult thing. You don't have to get that crazy about that. There's a huge difference between Bible believers and Baptists. Don't think just because you're a Baptist. I'm getting, I'm getting ready to get rid of the name Baptist. Okay. The King James 1611 AV Bible. And I think I'm going to end up over here, but I'm going to end here. You can be a King James only, only King James, and be of no value when you don't believe it. You don't believe the King James Bible, but you go. You don't read it. You don't study it. Now, there's a difference between reading your Bible and studying your Bible. Everybody reads the newspaper, but they don't study the newspaper. And you don't meditate. You don't pray over it. Well, I got the King James. King James only, but... Yeah, that's like that's like walking down the street telling everyone you're a fire hydrant. We are a King James Bible believing church, but you don't believe it. You see, the first time I did the individual, here's the here's the group, but it needs to be corrected. See, we're King James, but we got to correct it. It's not lived by the congregation. But only three verses of the King James is read from the pulpits or the podiums of that church. And we'll give you other quotes and other means other ways. I had I was in a church and Wednesday night. I forget who it was. I mean, he would copy this guy's book. And we would read what the guy wrote out of his book without opening the Bible. In the Greek. King James Bible is not in the Greek. It's in the English. There's a better rendering. There is more goat feeding than sheep feeding. John 21, 15 to 17, where, where, where Jesus told Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my lamb. If you love me, feed my sheep. You are to feed the sheep, the saved. John chapter 10. 
You're not to feed the goats, the unsaved. I, I had a Christian, I had a, a pastor of a church. Oh, well, Sunday mornings are only for the unsaved. What about the people who are saved to sit in your church? They're starving. You get up there and you preach to the lost people and you give that elegant luxury invitation to the altar and there's only eight people in the church and they all profess to be saved. Matthew 25, 32 describes to you who the sheep, who the goats are. In Matthew 25, 33. The devil loves a Christian that is a King James and doesn't believe every word of it. Every word of it. I sat, or, yeah, I sat in a Sunday classroom and argued with the instructor. Oh, the, and you go, the structure, instructing us, to, well, there is no inspired word of God. I said, there is inspired word of God. It is the absolute King James, every single word of that Bible, including the periods, including the commas, including the commas, and the chapter and the verse. Every word Jesus said. There are people in charge of people in the church and Satan loves them because, you know, they, they, that person didn't even have a King James. He attacked me because I was King James. The devil loves a Christian that is King James. And it doesn't change or convict them of their sin. Sunday's over, you go back to your highlight. You go back to your, your carnality. You go back to your sin. You go back to work lying to your boss. You go back and, and mistreating your wife. You go back and do whatever you were doing. You don't ever repent. You don't ever struggle with sin. But you got a King James. The devil loves a Christ Christian that is King James. He never opens the King James. He never removes the cellophane of the King James. Hey, I got a King James in a box. Crispy pages, not ever read. But I'm King James, never will move that cover. Don't you move that cover. I'll turn the pages of a, a newspaper. I'll open the pages of a magazine, but not, not my King James. The devil loves a Christian that's King James and does not bring it to church. You'd be amazed how many don't bring a Bible to church and there are a Bible in the church, they don't grab it. I know a pastor doesn't even bring a Bible to church. And there was a time he's doing his notes and he, he didn't print out the pages, whatever. He had to borrow somebody else's Bible. Because he didn't have a Bible, and he don't have the correct Bible. Shame on you. I didn't name names. I could. Uh, pastors want me to shut up. The devil loves a pastor. That's King James. It doesn't believe it's King James. See, you know, I'm using the King because they use the King James. I know a man, you know, I don't know King James, but, you know, my and whatever he uses, I don't even know what he uses. You're not King James. You're a phony. You're a hypocrite. You're a liar. You tell him I said that. The devil loves a pastor as King Jamie, he changes it. I sat under a pastor in the church, he would change the word. Instead of verily, verily, he would change right there. Truly, truly. That's what the modern Bible said. When he came up to John 14 about my mansion and said something else, that's when I left the church. The devil loves a pastor that's King James, and he Greeks it. In the Greek, 
In the Greek. You don't know anything about the Greek. You're only telling you what your professors told you. You couldn't go into Greek outside what your professors told you, even if a Greek sat in a room. I loved, I would love to bring to a church in the Greek. I'd love to bring a Greek and have him speak Greek from the pulpit or podium and see if that pastor knows what that Greek is saying. You find out he wouldn't. The devil loves a pastor that's King James and better rendering is. Better rendering means I don't believe it. You wouldn't do that to, to a doctor. You wouldn't do that to your auto mechanic. Or the guy's going to fix your sink, but you would do it with the word of God. And call yourself a man of God. Liar. Hypocrite. Phony. You're a $7 bill. With a president's face on the front and a jackass on the, on the other side. Ooh, he said ass at the same mule. The devil loves a pastor of the King James. He and the congregation does not grow as Christians. They stain their carnality. They stain their worldliness. And they don't grow. They don't witness. What I mean don't witness. Oh, you come to church. Will you come to church with me Sunday? Will you come to church? That's not witnessing. And when a pastor gets up and says, invite him to church, invite him to church, he wants to fill that seat so he can tell his pastor friends, I had 106 in my congregation this weekend. And all the pastors that I know, that I can name, well, pastor, where did that, where did that person go? I haven't seen him in a while. Well, I don't know. What have you done to, to bring him back? Nothing. He hasn't called me, hasn't contacted me, hasn't done nothing for me. Bring them in, bring them in, bring them in so the whole church can sin. That's why preachers don't like me. Devil loves a pastor with a King James Bible and doesn't live it. He doesn't live the word of God. The devil loves a pastor with a King James that doesn't read and study it. I know another pastor. At every year he would reuse, rehash his messages. That's not studying. That's not a pastor. You know what my school told me? You know what Charity Institute told me? When I was in classes to get my doctorate to be Dr. Stiley William Hamer, you know, you know what my professor told me, my instructor? When you come out with an outline and you preach or teach that outline, throw it in the garbage. I got a shredder right here. So you're not tempted to reuse it. I know a preacher who traveled all over. He said his messages would be in his Bible. So you would travel all over a well-known preacher and you give him the same thing. Let's get... I mean, listen, if, if you're going to have toast and butter every morning, eventually that's going to get tiring. That's going to... Oh, man, I, give me some cereal. The devil loves a pastor that's KJV, King James, exalts pastors, educators, school scholars of non-King James. You lift up men, you don't lift up God. Well, my professors, my old pastor, I, uh, let me quote from you from, from this guy you'll find in the bookshelf at your bookstore that has nothing to do with the King James Bible. Let me quote from you from the, from the sword of the Lord, non-King James Bible, nobody in it. 
I'm harsh when it comes to King James. It's having the right Bible. But does the right Bible have you? You can have a King James Bible. You can believe a King James Bible. You can say King James only. But what has that King James Bible done for you by what you have done with the King James? And if you're not going to read and study and pray over it, huh, go get whatever you want then. But you can't make the King James Bible a God. Because the King James Bible is not God. Some people, well, you know, they get their Bible signed by preachers and Friend, that's idolatry. Well, look, Dr. Such and Such has signed my Bible. Look, look, this minister over here signed my Bible. This person signed my Bible. Have you read that Bible? Do you know what that Bible says? Can you take that Bible and describe finances? Can you take that Bible and lead someone to Jesus Christ? Can you take that Bible and know how to be a husband, how to be a wife, how to be a child? Do you know how to take the King James Bible and be a Christian? You can say all you want, King James, King James. But if you don't read it, you don't study, you don't meditate over it, it's just not on any other book. All right, yay, King James. I'll read that one last one again. It's having the right Bible. But does the right Bible have you? The KJV, do you believe every word, every word? My wife, Tracy. We had people come up to us in our public ministry. Is this a correct Bible? And they have a King James Bible. Tracy would open the Bible to Acts 7. And if she didn't see Jesus, she saw Joshua. She said to him, that's not the right Bible. You see, even the devil, he's so slick. He's got King James Bibles out there, but they're not King James. you got to be very slick. And I guarantee if he messed that up that way, he's messed it up other ways. When in doubt, check it out. Luke 4.4 4. Jesus answered, Jesus said that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of God. How can you have every word the modern Bibles omit words and whole verses if you take away, if you subtract, if you omit a word or words you don't have a Bible. If my daughter was going to make a cake in the kitchen, and I went in the kitchen, and I stole the eggs, I removed the eggs, the end result will not be a cake. I don't know what it would be. Again, Jesus said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. When you show a person with a modern Bible, one subtraction of one word, that Bible is in error with what Jesus said. In 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God. They're studying. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That takes study. You got to make sure, is this for the church or is this for, who is this for? Is it for me or is it for somebody else? That takes studying. 